So, just what the remainder theorem is all about. As I told you earlier on, the, to understand the remainder theorem, the very, very important thing that we must know, or we must un come to understand, is the long division. Okay, so for example, I have 15 divided by, say, 4. Okay, so you know that, well, you have to be 12, and, and this is negative, and this is what is going on here. So this is what we learned long, long time ago, the long division using numbers and all. And now, the remainder theorem works in this principle. Okay, but there are certain things that we need to know before we can even go into that. Now, all of you should know that this number here, 3, is called the quotient. Okay, and this number 4 here is called the divisor. Okay, and of course, this number here, 3, is called the remainder. Okay, how about this number 15 here? Okay, this number 15 here has, a, has got a name for it, for it too. It is called the dividend. Okay, now, when you study this long division closely, you realize that there is a, you know, a relationship linking all these items together. Okay, linking the quotient, the divisor, the dividend, and the remainder together. Okay, just what is the relationship? Well, we, we should figure out that, hey, you know, 15 is actually 4 multiplied by 3 plus 3. Okay, now this 15 is our dividend. This 4 is the divisor. The 3 here is the quotient. And the 3 here is the remainder. So in short, what we realize is that the dividend is equal to the divisor multiplied by quotient plus remainder. Okay, now this works for numbers, but does this work also for polynomials? Yes. Now, this is what's going on in the case of a long division for polynomials. Okay, same thing. Okay, the long division, by now we should have learned how to do the long division for polynomials. Okay, but the terms, alright, the items here remain the same. Right, this thing here is called a dividend. It's going to divide. This thing here is called a divisor. Alright, this thing here is called the quotient. And of course, this negative one here is the remainder. Alright, since we figure out that, hey, you know, that the dividend is equal to the divisor multiplied by quotient plus remainder. What this is trying to tell us is that, hey, I know that 2x cubed plus 4x minus 7 can be written as the divisor, which is x minus 1, multiplied by the quotient, which is 2x squared plus 2x plus 6, okay, plus the remainder, which is negative 1. So, when you expand this out, you will get your um, dividend, okay, or which is this polynomial over here. Now, in short, this is what we always um, do in shorthand, okay, that um, the dividend is usually an fx, okay, it's always a function of x, is equal to the quotient, okay, which is a fu again a function of x in, um, you know, we call it the quotient, okay, which is this. Uh, multiply by its divisor plus the remainder. Okay? Now why why what okay, why is this important? I mean, alright, so now we figure out a, a relationship between the, the, the function, um the divisor, the quotient and the remainder. Okay, we figure out that yeah 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 this multiply by this plus this will give me this. But what was it gonna do? What just what exactly is the remainder theorem? Okay, now, this is what is going on. For example, we shall just use this as an example now. Okay? Now, for example, we know that, you know, we have a function, okay, which is 2x cubed plus 4x minus 7. Alright, so this is the function. Now, I'm interested to know the remainder when this function is divided by x minus 1. Okay, so this is the divisor, same thing as what we have above, we saw it, uh, we, we saw it just now. Okay, so I want to know, I want to know the remainder only. I don't, want to, I don't care about the quotient at all, I just want to know the remainder. The remainder when this function that I have here, 
divided by x minus 1, what would be the remainder? Okay, now since we know that, hey, you know, that fx is equal to the qx, which is quotient, multiplied by divisor plus the remainder. So we can actually write down the same relationship that we have above, I mean, that we discover above, okay, into this form. The only difference now is that, do you know what's the quotient? No, we have no idea what's the quotient. But do you know what's the divisor? Yes, we do. We know that the divisor is x minus 1. And do we know what's the remainder? No, not yet. So we pretend that we don't know the quotient. We pretend that we don't know the uh, remainder, which we really wouldn't know, okay, if we didn't do the long division. Okay, so just pretend that we never seen the long division earlier on. Okay, and um, this is what we're asked to do now. Okay, we're asked to find the remainder when this function is divided by x minus 1. So, based on this relationship that we figure out so far, okay, we will be able to form an equation like this. Okay, now back in identities, this is what we learned in identities, isn't it? Hey, you know, I want to find r. How am I going to find the remainder? Okay, remember the substitution method? Well, when you substitute in x is equal to 1, what happens here? Well, according to this bracket, this is x minus 1. So when x is 1, this 1 minus 1 will give you a 0. So the entire thing here, the entire product here will disappear. Okay, and you look at the le left hand side, you get 2 plus 4 minus 7 will be equal to our r. And that will give us our remainder, which is r, as, of course, negative 1. Okay? So this is what the remainder theorem is all about. It is a theorem that helps us to find the remainder, okay, in the shortest time possible, without the need to do this, the long division. There's no need to do the long division to get this, this remainder here anymore, okay, if we know this relationship okay if we know the re uh, the remainder theorem okay so now what exactly happened here is this okay so um, if you're interested in a function when it's divided by x minus 1 okay the remainder will be simply when you sub in x equals to 1 so f1 will give you 2 which is 1 cube plus 4 multiplied by 1 minus 7, this will give us a negative 1. Okay? So, how this works is all based on this. Okay? And when we sub in, when, when we sub in x equals 1, we will get rid of the, um, the quotient and the divisor all together, and we'll be only left with the remainder. And whatever at the left hand side will be the remainder. So, we, we really don't have to show this working. Okay, when we do our work, or you're in the exam, or you're solving for remainder uh, factor theorem type of question, you, you don't have to show this step at all. All you have to do is, you know, substitute in x equals to 1 immediately into the function. Okay, so, let us now take a look at a very short example. Okay, find the remainder when fx equals to x cubed minus 4x plus 2 is divided by x plus 2. So according to the remainder theorem that we just talked about, okay, when fx is divided by x plus 2, to find the remainder, all we have to do is to substitute in x equals to negative 2. So when you put in x equals to negative 2, this fx will become negative 2 cubed minus away 4 multiplied by negative 2 plus 2. So this will give us a negative 8 plus 8 plus 2 and that will give us a positive 2. And this means that the remainder of fx when divided by x plus 2 is 2. We can find the remainder now using the remainder theorem and that means to say we don't have to do the long division to find the rem uh, remainder. In summary, the remainder theorem states that to find the remainder when fx is divided by x plus a, any constant a, right, the remainder will be equal to fa, simply means you substitute in x equals to a, okay, as uh, shown in this little short example here. Okay, we, we have a few more examples to show you more complex type of situation uh, whereby we use the remainder theorem.